Hi friends, Chef Sky here. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to prepare no eggy mayo uh, for my cookbooks, the Gentle Chef Cookbook and the Non-Dairy Evolution Cookbook, uh, which by the way are available through my website, thegentlechef.com. Um, let me explain first what mayonnaise is. Mayonnaise is an, emuls an emulsion of protein, water, fat, and seasonings. In the case of eggless mayonnaise, uh, we're using uh, organic soy milk to replace the egg that would normally be in mayonnaise. And, uh, and the rest is pretty much made the same way. Uh, I'm going to uh, prepare the mayonnaise using an immersion blender. Um, it can also be prepared using a food processor, but the immersion blender really works better because it has a higher RPM in the uh, the little blade and what that does is it fractionates the oil down into very very small particles which helps it emulsify with the soy milk and the other ingredients if you're using the food processor uh, it will work and it will take a little bit more oil than it would if you were using the immersion blender the RPMs of the blade spinning in the food processor just aren't as powerful as they are with an immersion blender um, and the nice thing about using the immersion blender is you use a, like a heavy Pyrex uh, measuring bowl to prepare it in. And it's, it's actually very simple. But I think a lot of people get intimidated by the process or they've had a bad experience in the past where the, the mayonnaise broke. And so I'm going to show you it's really, uh, it's very simple and breaking the mayonnaise is, uh, if you follow this technique, it's just not going to happen. So um, I have my soy milk measured out here. Um, why I use soy milk as opposed to other non-dairy milks is because soy milk is already a stable emulsion. That means um, when soy milk is made, if you put it in the refrigerator, it doesn't separate. It stays mixed. It's homogenized. If you prepare uh, cashew milk or any other uh, plant milks and put them in the refrigerator, they're going to separate. That's because they're unstable. So when you're preparing a mayonnaise, which you want the mayonnaise to stay stable in the refrigerator, you want to use a stable milk to start with. Okay, so I've got my soy milk there. Um, I'm going to add my seasoning ingredients. And then I'm going to add my acids. And these are all for flavor. The acids um, include lemon juice and uh, apple, raw apple cider vinegar. Now you could also, if you want to do a variation, you can use lime juice instead of the lemon juice and maybe add some chipotle seasoning to your uh, seasoning ingredients. A very important seasoning ingredient is uh, dry ground mustard. And it's not only for flavor. What the mustard does is it contains a high amount of mucilage. So it helps emulsify the mayonnaise and keeps it, you know, um, together so it doesn't separate in the refrigerator. So it's a very important ingredient. Don't omit this. I've also added to my seasoning ingredient a little Kala Namak. It's also known as Himalayan black crystal salt. And what that does is that uh, it adds that little bit of egg flavor if you really want an authentic tasting mayonnaise. Um, it's not a necess necessary ingredient though. You can skip it if you want. It has a uh, the black salt has a real sulfury uh, aroma and doesn't appeal to everybody. But you only need a pinch. Okay, so then I've got all my ingredients in there. I've got my oil set aside. Um, you want to use a lighter textured oil that's very mild in flavor, such as soybean, canola, grapeseed, safflower, or sunflower oil. Um, olive oil can be used, but it's got a much stronger flavor and it's a heavier oil. So I've had problems in the past with it staying emulsified. Um, the mayonnaise seems to break down quicker. And I had a problem with avocado oil for that same reason. So I tend to stick with these lighter textured oils. If you want to use olive oil or avocado oil, I suggest um, putting it in a carrier oil, such as sunflower or safflower, in a smaller amount, maybe a half, half cup. Um, now, all the measurements for the mayonnaise are in both of my cookbooks. So all you have to do really is uh, to start, you're going to put your ingredients in there and blast it with the immersion blender. Now this process is going to be a little noisy, so I'm going to just uh, start preparing the mayonnaise. Now what you want to do 
is you want to add the oil slowly. You don't have to drip it in, or, you know, you just, but just add it slowly because you don't want to break the emulsion. If you notice, I'm just, you know, I'm stirring the immersion blender around. Don't lift it out or you're going to splatter the mixture all over the place. Uh, using the immersion blender can be a little tiring on your hand and your arm. So if you need to take a break, that's fine for a couple seconds. Uh, just be sure you stop pouring the oil when you take the break. And then you can just resume where you, you know, left off. <laughs> see that but the mixture is already starting to thicken up. I'm going to take a break for a second. What I like to do is I like to stop and catch up um, because the oil will, as it thickens, the oil will start to sit there a little bit. So you want to catch up with the immersion. Oil. Catch up here. And then it's just a matter of just catching up a little bit. And making sure all the oil is incorporated.
And there you have it. It's really amazing that, I mean, who would have thought you really don't need eggs for this? And this mayonnaise rivals the best uh, commercial mayonnaise. Uh, it's uh, similar to, uh, uh, to, to Veginaise or Veganaise, uh, which is very popular, but it's a fraction of the cost to make this yourself at home. Yeah, there are some really good, I know some people are allergic to soy milk, so, and I know that, you know, there's some good cashew-based uh, mayonnaises circulating on the internet and stuff like that, and they're, they're very good, but they really, what they are, they're really thick creams, as opposed to, um, like, a more authentic mayonnaise texture, which is real wobbly and jiggly, and it's, like, you can see right here the texture of the mayonnaise. Um, so this, it's just really good. So it is unfortunate if you're allergic to soy milk, but, um, but I think, you know, soy, soy allergies seem to be somewhat rare. They're not, you know, too common. So, but um, that's how you make it. Very, very simple. Uh, basic ingredients, uh, inexpensive, cholesterol-free, compassionate. We're not supporting the egg industry, and I think you'll really enjoy this recipe. Thanks a lot.